Take what you need and donate what you can. Food insecurity is something you can help out with here in the city of Lincoln. The Little Free Pantries are obviously one of very many ways to address food insecurity. Hi, my name is Jean Helms, and I am the Administrative Director at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln, and I am pleased to uh, be interviewing Michael Reinmiller today. Michael is one of the folks who started the Little Free Pantries here in Lincoln, and the Little Free Pantries are the Share the Plate recipient this month of August 2021, um, which means that any money that you give for Share the Plate in August will go to the Little Free Pantries. So we're going to talk a little bit more today about that, and um, I welcome Michael to this Zoom meeting recording. Greetings. Thanks for being here. Um, what I want to do is, um, first of all, for those of us that don't know of already about the Little Free Pantries, can you tell us a little bit about the genesis, how it all started? Well, I saw, originally, a few years ago, I saw a thing on CBS uh, Sunday morning uh, about a little free pantry, and I, it might just struck me. I was like, why aren't we doing that? I mean, it just was like, whack. And so I called my father-in-law and said, Jim, I want you to concoct a box I can put out front. It has to be weatherproof with a clear window and a door. And he's, I said, I want to do it with you. So he said, yeah, 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 sure, no problem. So he calls about a week later and says, I hope I don't offend you, but I'd sure like it if I could start the project without you. Because <laughs> he lives in West Point, Nebraska, and I don't get to see him very often. So I said, sure, 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 go ahead. It kind of slipped my mind. So the next thing you know, a week or so later, it's like just before Christmas, he's, he's in, backing up the driveway with this pantry. We, and he was, it was, he's like, I don't know if you're going to be able to put it in the ground. And I'm like, don't tell me I can't put it in the ground because it was frozen. Well, I put it in, and within a few days, it was already busy. And that was before the pandemic hit. Uh, and so I was like, wow, uh, next thing you know, my, my neighbors kind of leaned in, they're putting boxes of cereal in and feminine hygiene products and toilet paper and toothbrushes and it snowballed. Um, someone else wants one. Next thing you know, I think my father-in-law's, I think he's built 13 of them now. And there's that I know of 38 in Lincoln. So, which is great. Wow. Like, be cool to each other. And that's so cool. You know, you turn the news on and everyone wants to kill each other. It is so cool to look out my front front door and go, wow, not everybody is, is mean to each other. So it's, it's been really inspiring to watch it happen. Yeah, it has been really cool. And I'm happy to say that the Unitarian Church has definitely supported you. The members and friends of the church have, a lot of people have given, uh, you know, items for it, uh, including a lot of masks and sa hand sanitizer during the pandemic um pounds but, uh, and pounds boxes yeah. And boxes <laughs> yeah how how uh was it during the pandemic what was it like uh, you know well the whole time i was working from home and there were a lot of days where i would fill the pantry from bare empty to five times a day wow uh you know every 15 minutes i'd get a break and i'd go out there and it'd be completely empty already right so, and you're it's a not size box it holds a lot of stuff right and you're not supported by anyone, uh, any corporation or foundation, uh, citywide, statewide. It's all from individual donations, right? Individual donations. The only business that has done anything major, I had some uh, donations from, um, uh, it was a grocery store, um, I, Russ's. They gave a $200 gift card once. And then uh, a photography business that is brilliant here in Lincoln gave, gave a little bit too. <laughs> I see. Okay. <laughs> that wouldn't but, be AV dude. What it would, what would happen oh, now that you mentioned it? Yeah, but no, um, <laughs> those are the only businesses in Lincoln that have, have, that I can think of right now. I hope I'm not forgetting someone. It's just been such a blur this last couple of years with, I mean, I'm wearing my stairs out, going up and down, loaded and unloaded, you know, filling it yeah. up all the time. And yeah, it's also so cool to, to, to look outside and you see a car pull up and they got bags and bags and they're putting it in and the next car shows up and they're unloaded. It's, it's just, it's kind of like a hub of community. It's really no questions asked. It's just take what you need, leave what you can. Yeah. So what do they do with stuff if the box is full? Do they just put it on your porch or? Yeah, I have, often I'll walk out and there'll be bags and boxes. Sometimes I'll get a text from a number. I have no clue or how they even <laughs> got my number. I'll say, hey, there's a bunch of stuff on the front porch. And I'll look out. There it is. Awesome. So it's really, really inspiring. And we I've needed some inspiring in the last 
16 months and it's been like, oh, it comes right to my door. Right. So timing wise, do I have it right that December, it was December of 19, 2019? Yes. That would have been just under two years or yes. year and a half. Yes. So in a year and a half, your original uh, idea and motivation has expanded from one box to three dozen in the city of Lincoln, Nebraska. Or more, because I think a lot of them aren't on our Facebook group because maybe they don't want people from the other type side of town coming. Maybe they only want to help their little block. And that's sure. right there. You know, that's <laughs> I'm not saying you got to be part of this big, large group. Um, in fact, all of the pantries are very individual. So someone may put um, a lot of one kind item in and others, others. In fact, we have a, a host group that we often like just the other day, someone donated a whole bunch of uh, cans of soda. And so I got on there and I said, hey, I've got, you know, 60 cans of soda. Come and pick it up. I don't want to carry it all down the flight of stairs. So, yeah. you know, a couple of even fellow Unitarians that have some uh, some pantries have showed up and picked them up while I was maybe sleeping. I don't know. <laughs> it's been weird. Yeah. And I will say that um, that's one of the things that I'm excited about is that you've inspired some of our other members and friends to uh, put them in. I know a few of them also have little free libraries um, and have doubled up with a library of take a book, leave a book, and then also the food one. And I think there's four or five now amongst us that have at least, them. At least that I know of. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't you remember, but the California Raisins used to have a thing that would say books, check them out. And that was kind of like the thing. And I always wanted to say like food, eat it up or come up with a, <laughs> and have the have lip sync to the California Raisins. But clearly I have not had that kind of time on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was really happy also that um, Little Free Pantries was selected as a share the plate recipient for this year. And um you know, well-established, a lot of people have seen it in the media, uh, social media, but also um, I know you've been featured in uh, print and possibly on TV uh, news at, at least a couple times. Um, so um, you mentioned in another conversation that we were having about some of the most needed items, and I'd like you to repeat that um, here so that people know you know, basically what you go through the most of and, and also weather related, um, you know, what you look for more in the summer versus winter, because I think this video will remain on our YouTube uh, page at the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. And so people might view it later and um, want to know what, what would be best. Um, feminine hygiene products are, I can't keep them stocked. Um, I've gotten some donations from friends um, even in my open circle here at church, and I'll order $200 worth of feminine hygiene products off Amazon, and they're gone in a week, um, which has made my Amazon suggestions completely off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> but now, let me stop you for a second. Do you think that's because um, some of the folks that are food insecure that are um, are using, you know, relying on the pantries in part for their food, for their families, do you think that's because like they also maybe have food stamps and food stamps doesn't pay for those. I, like mean, it's... I, I would bet cash on that. Okay. Yes. Um, That's what I was then, thinking. Well, plus uh, those kinds of things. You and a cereal is another item, for example, because you don't need to cook it. You don't need pots and pans. You don't need a spoon. You can eat it right out of the bag or the box. You can keep it in a backpack. It'll keep for almost ever. So it's one of those things you, and it's marginally good for you, depending on what cereal you get. Um, kids like Cheerios, you know, that kind of stuff. So that bo boxes of cereal are another thing I can't keep. Uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste. I had a donation. I tweeted to um, UNMC, uh, the dentist college, and asked them if they had any toothbrushes and toothpaste. They donated, I'm going to say six or 700 tubes of toothpaste. My truck was squatting. It was so much. Wow. That, that lasted a month. Wow. It just goes. Uh, it, it boggles the mind how fast uh, the, the need is there. And I think the pandemic just really dumped the clutch on, on it or certainly opened my eyes to it more. That's right. Sure. So, and boxes of cereal need to not be the big, huge ones because they don't fit, right? Not the super huge ones, the regular family size one. Not the, sorry, family sizes are the big ones. Okay. Regular size, they'll fit fine. 
Okay. Uh, even bags are okay, but they don't think they, they're kind of weird shaped. So yeah. boxes are nice. And then what is not okay to put in there in the winter? In the winter, things that will freeze because it'll burst. So no cans. Um, summertime, I put in those little frosty pops, you know, they're in the plastic tubes because kids can take them home and put them in the freezer. And this summer has been busy on that because uh, LPS students were not getting free lunches at school. So I think that really picked up the need. I mean, I'd see a lot of kids at the pantry. Mm -hmm. And um, well, and we've had some pretty hot spells too. Yes, yes. So yeah, it's, it, it's mind boggling how quickly it empties. And so beyond one, one story I'll tell real quick. I went out and I thought, you know, it was a hot day. It was miserable hot. I went out and I'm carrying some things out and I'm like, oh, there's somebody already here and I'll just wait because, you know, I didn't have a mask on. I was outside. So I kind of stood back and this lady has a, a minivan, two or more crying children in the van and she's in tears unloading stuff in the van. And I thought, mm. wow, you know, I mean, <laughs> we're making a difference. It's making, yeah. so my arm hair is standing up just remembering it. I mean, it's. So um, you mean she was unloading stuff into the pantry? No, she was getting oh. stuff in the pantry. And okay. She was in tears because she was struggling. Yeah. You know, she was struggling and that that's, that's not, you know, some place out in California or someplace far away. That's here in Lincoln. I mean, yeah. her plates had the number two at the front. They are our neighbors, you know? Yeah. You said you've met a lot of your neighbors too. Like maybe you don't know their name, but you've met a lot of folks oh, yeah. that walk, walk to the pantry yeah. every it's, week or every it's day. It's been kind of a, I don't want to say neighborhood watch, but it's been like, oh, hey, how you doing? How's your dog? Or you're walking alone today. Where's your spouse? You know? And it's just, it's kind of been a, a community. I think the neighbors have developed pride in it. Mm, honestly. Sure. Um, so, okay. So no, nothing that'll freeze in the winter. And is there anything that you should not put in there in the hotter months? I can't remember. Chocolate probably. Oh yeah. <laughs> but anything um, that'll melt. Yeah. Those kinds of things. Now it is kind of cool in the middle of winter. I'll I put a couple of Snickers bar in there because who doesn't deserve a little bit of chocolate now and then. <laughs> Uh, so on the, in a month, uh, so if someone's watching this video later and it's not August of 2021 anymore, uh, or the, you know, specific share the plate month, um, if people wanted to support the little free pantries aside from, um, putting food into them, and we'll talk about that in a second, what is the other way that people could support you? How do they get the funds to you? Should we just like give the Facebook page or? Yeah, the Facebook of... page, we've got a, it's, it's, L, it's Little Free Pantries LNK. And uh, you can say, you can even mention on there, hey, this is my, this is my neighborhood. Who needs my help that's close to me? And one of those other pantry viewers will say, hey, there's one at this address and it's empty today. Okay. Uh, you, could, you could message uh, a Miss Jean Helms or myself. Uh, we have, uh, I know I currently have a GoFundMe that's available but those expire after a while. So I have to close it and start anew, but. Um, so they can always contact the Unitarian church and we would get the funds to you or let them know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, the Facebook page is little free pantries. LNK is how you find it. Um, and if they wanted to send money directly to you, they could find out how to do that through the Facebook page also, yes. or find out how to contact you by, by contacting the church. That's great. Um, I don't, I imagine just, um, because of how successful it has been already in less than two years that it will continue to expand. And I just, I'm really proud that, um, we've been able to help support it and, and help to sort of fill the gaps because, um, food stamps are great and they have been, a, a godsend to a lot of people during the pandemic, but they don't always cover the needs of a, of a family. So, um, again, I'm just, I'm really, um, pleased to be a part of it and to hear some success stories from it. Um, is there anything else you want to share about, about the, the only thing I wanted to make sure I wanted to tell everyone is it's, it's kind of my, I don't know if the word mantra is the correct word, but uh, on the front of the pantry, it says little free pantry, take what you need, leave what you can hashtag kindness matters. And I really think that physically putting something in a pantry is saying, I have the time, the energy, I'm going to show up and do something for someone, even if I don't notice that it's, even if I don't know who it's helping. I think that it 
that kindness does matter and it does make a difference. And I wish I had my Mr. Rogers shirt on when I said that, darn it. But <laughs> anyway, I wanted to get that across. <laughs> so uh, one thing I did forget too, is if somebody wanted to set one up uh, themselves, then they could contact the church or contact you through the Facebook yes. page also, right? Yes. yes. Great. Um, and you can tell them more about, you know, if there's any kind of a cost involved with building the box or how people are going about doing that. Yeah. In the past, we did get some grant money from Civic Nebraska to help build them, which covered like 98% of the costs. Uh, so I don't know if I don't, I think that's expired, but let me know and maybe we'll find another uh, source of revenue. Great. And thank you, Unitarian Church. I'm glad you all show up so often. Yes.